Yo, what is going on you guys? Bastion Wajio here and today I'm finally back from the vacation guys. It was awesome. We spent a little bit of time in New Orleans. Uh, went to Houston went to the Houston Regional. If you guys stuck with me through my Instagram and uh, my community page, community tab posts I've been making on YouTube. You guys will have known. Uh, placed 67th out of a 558 or 560 depending on which judge you ask. Uh, person regional which is actually is a huge huge accomplishment for myself considering I haven't been to a regional in five years my first one back uh, but uh, we didn't get top 64 so we didn't get our invite we're three slots away guys very very close but it was a great experience had fun met a lot of really awesome people out there as well so uh, you know what it is where it is and we'll definitely get them next time but I just want to go ahead and get that out there before uh, before we go ahead and start with this. Also, I did play Trap Tricks, which uh, if you guys don't remember, I put a poll on the channel uh, not that long ago when I let you guys choose if I was, if I was going to go ahead and play Pure Sprite or Trap Tricks, and I think you guys definitely chose correctly. Trap Tricks over Sprite just because I did not see any Sprite in the top part of, in the top tables at all. It was the wildest thing. I saw Fluanderies, I saw Plunder Patrol, I saw Drytrons, I saw everything that was not, I saw Dark Worlds, I saw <laughs> everything that was not Sprite, I definitely saw on the top tables, which was super, super wild. And I ended up um, uh, finishing X2-2 out of 10 rounds, so six wins, two losses, and two ties. Two ties, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Uh, regardless, guys, I just wanna give you a quick rundown of that. Also, I did not get any deck profiles, uh, just because the tournament started a lot later for that so just go ahead and you know, be aware of that I don't have any uh, Houston regional deck profiles but go ahead and check out Team Bortle I did get to meet Team Bortle as well uh, which is really cool although it was really awkward so you know whatever it is where it is um, but he is going to have a lot of the uh, all the top eight I believe profiles on his channel so definitely go ahead and check that out if you have not done so already I believe today or tomorrow he'll be dropping the Plunder Patrol for top eight of the Houston regional we actually got here from San Antonio uh, so he absolutely crushed it which is absolutely amazing but uh, anyway guys let's go ahead and get into it well, well I'm doing a, I'm doing a video tomorrow uh, going to run down of the Houston regional also my deck that I played so go ahead and make sure you subscribe and make sure you tune in tomorrow to go ahead and check that out as well but anyway let's get into the market watch guys so we are first here with muckracker of the underworld so this is a car that's absolutely just skyrocketed in price uh this guy bought it for 30 bucks don't buy it for 30 bucks not worth that just yet but i mean for a car that was worth four five six bucks really nothing too crazy maybe six seven bucks i should say uh for the majority of the slice pan right here it is really skyrocketed in price honestly i do not know where this is coming from i know uh that it was played by the guy who got top eight with uh with dark world uh his name john's also from san antonio which is pretty cool san antonio proud um so that was awesome but uh, besides that i'm not i don't really know what other decks play this to be perfectly honest with you i think sprite uh does something with this as well uh in the in the runic version if i'm not mistaken so there was sprite dark world uh, and for the off the top of my hand, I can't think of another Fiend deck besides um, the, I believe Brian and Despia has some Fiends in it as well. I think they're Dark Fairies. Anyway, so Muckracker of the Underworld, <laughs> to get to the bottom of it, has gone to a minimum price point around $14, $15 verified seller on uh, TCG Player, which is actually quite a bit of a jump. So it's three times the price it was about a few weeks ago. So if you have any Muckrackers going around, Muckracker of the Underworld going around in your bulk, or in your trade binder, make sure you offload offload them now. Like I really don't see this uh, card going up much higher than this. Uh, definitely not something I saw coming. But just so you guys know, Muckracker of the Underworld, definitely a card that is skyrocketing in price and quick, if I may. It goes from 15, 14 to 15 to 16 very, very quickly and is very, very limited on the overall listing. So that is something to keep in mind as well. Uh, page two immediately quickly goes up to 16 all the way to 25 and 30 dollars so that is something you want to keep in mind as well is with limited supply this could change next by next week this card could easily go into the 20 and 30 dollar range just because there's again not that many people in uh, or i'm not interested in it but that's definitely interest for it but it has gone up in price and with the low quantity and everything this is a card that you are going to want to offload as soon as possible I don't recommend necessarily waiting till next week because realistically with 
uh, obviously a lot of people taking a lot more interest in this car, things like that, they may be more on the market, is really a gamble when it comes to this kind of stuff. So I would say move it now rather than later. Maybe you can get 15 to 18 bucks for it. Essentially, it's still a really good value for what the card is and what it does. Uh, now, based off the Houston Regional, I did see a card quite a bit, which was Waybridge being played by Labyrinth and Trap Tricks players alike, uh, which was very interesting. Uh, so basically, it's, a tra uh, of course, a normal trap card, which works very well with Trap Tricks, so get me, uh, don't get me wrong. Um, but basically, if your opponent controls two or more monsters than you do, your opponent must send monsters they control to the graveyard. They can only control one monster, so this does not target, uh, this does not destroy, and this does not affect by... Uh, by card effect because it's forcing your opponent to do it for you so that is something to keep in mind with Waybridge is that it gets around a lot of uh, a lot of protection that a lot of the cards have nowadays so with only going for like four or five dollars each it's probably a card you are going to want to pick up sooner rather than later i don't necessarily see this picking up too much in popularity um but i did see it quite a bit at the houston regional so it really just depends like i said i didn't get any of uh the profiles from there but depending from it i think that this might be one of the best cards to invest in now because it may be even better down the line again depending on what might happen but this being one of the most underhyped Secret Rares coming out of Photon Hypernova, I think now has come a little bit more playability, a little bit more viability, and the better and better Trap Tricks and Labyrinth get, I think the more and more playability a card like Waybridge is gonna see. We might have to wait for another ban list just to make sure that Labyrinth and Trap Tricks can climb up even higher on the totem pole, because right now it's everyone's it's fair game for all decks essentially. I mean, I, I saw every single deck out there just running amok doing whatever they wanted, which is absolutely crazy. I'm pretty sure I saw someone playing ABC at some point, so... Uh, uh, absolutely wild, wild, wild uh, regional, uh, but that gives you a good idea of again what is to come, what the format is like, and I think you've seen said it best in the video he uploaded yes uh, today, which if you guys are seeing tomorrow on Monday, it will be yesterday. Is that Konami is doing is doing a very very good job of uh, mixing it up when it comes to highly highly competitive formats where it's tier zero, it's tier lament, you know. And then bring it back, bring it back down to very, very open uh, format where every deck is viable. Because right before that, we of course had uh, Sword Soul. Uh, we've had what uh, early Tier Lament, which was not as oppressive. Early Sprite as well, which was a very good deck, but still very playable. Branded was still uh, very, very playable. So it was a very more diverse format. Then it became Tier Zero, <laughs> and then now we're back into a diverse format. So I mean, like I guess like I like what Konami is doing as well as far as keeping it up and down. That way, there's always going to be someone who is definitely investing high. In into the game. Uh, so anyway, Waybridge. Uh, next, Triple Tractor's Thrust. So this has been uh, a bit of a wild ride as far as this goes. Started on like $100 and it went down to 70. I think it's settling out around $75 a copy, which is nice because it was selling at one point for like 60, 50, 60, which was like ridiculous. Um, but it is nice to see that it's finally leveling out around $75. It's not a card that I see very, very often. It's a card that has a lot of potential, but it's a card that, again, I do not see being played nearly as much as you should for a card of this caliber. I mean, when Triple Tactics Talents came out, that card was in every single deck. You had to play it. But Triple Tactics Thrust, while it is very, very good and the applicability is fantastic, I just think it, that players, of course, are going to be able to play around it unless you have you're playing cash tier in which case a rise card is mandatory um but if you're not playing cash tier you are you do have the option to go ahead and play around triple tactics thrust but even then most you're going to be able to search out is going to be uh like an evenly matched which is going to be wrong it's a blowout card but if you're at that point in the game if uh, you've already had to force out a a monster interruption from your opponent likely it's more likely than not that you may be running out of resources at that point as well. So it's a bit of an imbalance when it comes to this card. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Uh, most, well, me personally, I'm not going to pay $75 for, for this card, mainly because I don't need it in any of my decks. Maybe in a going second uh, Sky Striker, it would be best to go ahead and play this, but I've seen Sky, Sky Striker all over uh, OTS locals and even at some regional levels as well do very, very well without necessarily playing this card at three or even at all in their deck. So it's really going to be up to your own personal preference of whether you think that purchasing this card is going to be worth it or not. 
Personally, I don't think so. 75 is just a bit too much for me, but I digress. Uh, another card that I saw quite a bit at the Houston Regional was number 60, Dugar's Timeless. So this has seen the most roller coaster out of any of the other cards in this in this market watch, guys. Huge, huge ups and downs and has a lot of applicability. So this is used in Dark Worlds, of course, you'll be able to gain more advantage when it comes to drawing. The rank four engine has expanded so, so much, guys. And with rank four decks really starting to take more and more hold of the meta, especially with Trap Tricks leading the front, and you have, of course, Dark World and a few other ones along the way, you can definitely play some rank fours in there as well. This is just coming more and more the norm, where you're able to go ahead and have, of course, uh, dinosaurs as well. And then, I, I mean, I forget about that. I saw dinosaurs quite a bit yesterday as well, doing quite a lot. Actually tied against one dinosaur player also, so, and he did use this to beat me that one in one of our games, where I honestly, <laughs> these are the thing where you good players don't read cards. I literally thought this card's only a effect was to draw two cards this card one i had i did not read the skip the next uh skip the battle phase of your next turn also double the attack of one monster you control until the end of this turn uh that that just did uh, it did not register it never registered with me so quick reminder guys of course make sure you read your cards make sure you understand the cards so this card has so much applicability right now uh they do have two copies both are ultra rares both are going for around four uh three or four dollars right now nothing too too crazy i definitely pick up the uh, second haunting i mean see exact same uh, ultra rare but uh, this card I can see going up in price with more and more people topping using this card in their extra deck and uh, with only two printings as well of course now on to the next card Baron the floor is seems like it's selling out around $40 for the reprints $50 if you want the original version honestly this is absolutely fantastic it's pretty much what we expected it to be at between 30 and $40 uh, for the uh, for the copy the thing is the reprints that you really never know uh, how good the reprints going to be obviously we're getting a reprint but realistic Konami could short print it, things like that, which is kind of scummy to do, but I think Konami's done it, like I said before, in previous market watches, a fantastic job of doing the reprint justice, essentially, is what I'm trying to say. So, Bear on the Floor at $30 to $40 is actually going to be a really good investment for anybody looking to play that card in the game. Uh, next, I want to go ahead and take a look at here, guys. Uh, so, I have here a still of one of my previous, uh, let me give myself a like. <laughs> <laughs> of one of my previous uh, market watches I did this I did this one about two uh, two weeks ago, right? We're looking at cash tier. It was, we got forty dollars for cashier Theosis, ten dollars for Unicorn, four, twelve, you know, things like that. Forty dollars for the Fenrir's. If you look at it now, guys, it has decreased quite a bit. We see a ten dollar drop in cashier Theosis, one dollar here, two dollars here, uh, four dollars off the Fenrir's cashier Rise cards around the same price. This deck just continues to become more and more and more affordable. Why is that? Why is it that cash tier is seeing a, by far the most competitive success out of most decks, but the price of the deck overall keeps dropping? Is it that people are opening so much of this product that it is just overflowing the market with cards in order to be able to purchase? You can say that with 160 listings for a card like cash tier and unicorn. Uh, over 200 listings for Cash Tier, Tira and Cash Tira, over 150, you know, it goes on and on and on. I could really just list off all of these like that as well, guys. But the fact of the matter is that while Cash Tier is one of the best decks of the format, no one's going to argue with that. It is definitely not a tier zero format. It is definitely not what I would consider to be the best deck of the format just because it has a lot of natural weaknesses. Now, one thing you can do with this deck, of course, is you definitely go ahead and splash it with other types of decks like Cash Tier Sprite, I saw do very very well at the regional yesterday this guy was piloting all the way into the top tables um, you can mix it with other decks just to go ahead and make sure that other decks are more viable but with the current trend that we are seeing with cash tier overall I think give this another week or two you could probably pick up the entire deck for around two to three hundred dollars I mean let's be realistic guys I think the only uh, expensive card in the deck is gonna be um, the field spell so yeah that's the only real expensive one here uh, going for around 50 45 to 50 dollars a copy so that's automatically gonna be be around 150 for the playset of course um, but if you look at cash tira you pick up the theosis for 30s each that's 90 uh, another 90 on the fenrir is more or less 180 plus 150 or at 330 right now and then you just pick up these cards right here right now it's around a 400 deck it started as a $1,000 deck so that is something to keep in mind as well I'm not gonna 
spend too much more time on cash here but just so you guys know i mean the deck just keeps dropping and dropping and dropping in price and i don't see why it wouldn't just keep dropping at this point essentially i mean we're see we're seeing clearly that's not a tier zero deck although it is a very very high ceiling deck it is definitely not the best best deck of the format and we are seeing that of course across the board now uh let's go to plunder patrol so this i just want to go ahead and put this out before uh team Bortle puts the profile for plunder patrol uh if he has done it already my bad but i'm, I'm recording this on sunday keep that in mind uh so these are the prices uh for sunday for plunder patrol now after we see that i guess top eight maybe a few more regionals here and there we, i do want to come back to this because a lot of these have one to two printings things like that but it's not a deck that is very very highly highly ex uh uh, reprinted and accessible things like that and now listings are starting to drop here and there but they're still a very very affordable deck I'm pretty sure you can pick up the entire deck for like 50 60 bucks max for the entire core of it and it's a deck that really realistically guys piloted by a really really good duelist I think this deck is one of the best out there but I do not believe that this is gonna be one of those decks where anybody can just go ahead and pick up the cards and and start playing the deck and start getting you know uh, first place here, first place there. It is going to take a little bit of time to understand the deck inside and out, the combos, the lines here and there, which ships are best in which scenario, things like that. So that is something to keep in mind. But overall, it's a fun strategy, it's a fun artwork, fun concept, everything like that. So honestly, I'm probably going to go ahead and pick up the deck right now just to go ahead and get profiles for you guys. But realistically, other than that, I just want to make sure you guys are aware of these prices before they skyrocket. Just go ahead and say that right now. Uh, Fluanderies is another deck that I saw doing very well. Uh, the most expensive card of the deck right now, I believe, is still the Advent of Adventure. Sitting around $10 right now. I do not believe it's going to get a reprint anytime soon because it's not really a card that is highly demanded right now. But again, I saw so much Fluandries at the top tables. It is absolutely ridiculous in Houston region. I don't think anybody sees this deck coming. It has been proven that Fluandries apparently does not need the storm winds. It just needed time in order to be able to <laughs> make sure that it can properly adjust the strategy. Being able to main deck cards like Harpy's Feather uh, Storm, Storm, right? Harpy's Feather Storm instead of Feather Duster, of course, is able to go ahead and get main deck now and playing other floodgates, things like that. Just makes a deck that much more viable. Now, instead of being able to stun you with the battle with the storm winds, it decides to outgrind you and out stun you with other cards in this fully, fully stocked arsenal of weaponry, essentially, or of support. Uh, and the last deck I want to go ahead and check out, guys, is the Labyrinth archetype. So remember this guy, uh, Welcome Labyrinth. We touched on this a few weeks back as well where we said you know uh lab welcome lab it's like 50 bucks everything like that this has plummeted in price <laughs> uh dropping 20 dollars in the past week or two i think it's a pretty significant drop i'm not gonna lie uh that's pretty pretty noticeable um to a card that was you know, a deck that is seen as one of the best of the format to just plummet so so much now don't get me wrong 50 dollars for a welcome labyrinth and 50 50 dollars i believe for ariadna or adriana whatever it was it did seem overpriced at the time um but seeing as it is now even ariana is now like 14 dollars a copy uh this deck has become a far far more obtainable which i definitely am uh pro uh see even ariana a huge huge plummet in price and i think that's just because we are not seeing it have the original success that we thought it would just because, again, the rise in popularity of Traps Tricks has really decreased the viability of Labyrinth and vice versa, right? Because they're decks that essentially coexist with one another. Or I should say, as long as one is down, the other one should go up. You know, as long as no one is down, the other one will go up. Reason why I say this now we have two strong trap based decks in the current format unless anyone wants to make a case for true draco or eldritch right so with two trap based decks that are both extremely extremely explosive and very very viable in the format what are people going to do side denko seka side jinzo side uh mst cosmic cyclone twin twister uh heavy storm duster all these cars that really affect the deck it had uh, the Royal Decree, <laughs> all of these cards that really just immediately just say no to the deck overall. And I believe the viability of Trap Tricks really, really shooting up to where we, I, I personally did not see that coming. 
uh, and Labyrinth being also, again, one of the most popular decks in the format, both those decks doing so, so well, has just decreased the popularity, not the popularity, I should say, it has decreased the viability of both decks because now people are trying to prepare for these matchups, so that is something to keep in mind as well. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys, I don't want to run too, too long, but uh, it is good to be back, start making videos again. Um, I, I don't think you guys saw really too much of a break, but you know, with me gone, whatever, and having to prep, um, it's been it's been a it's been a minute since <laughs> since I've hopped behind the computer. But uh, let me know what you guys think about these cards in the comment section down below. If there's a card that I missed, definitely let me know in the comments. And you can also let me know if you like this video by smashing that like button, that subscribe button, and dinging that notification bell for me. I appreciate each and every single one of you guys to stick around this long. And without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>